Hi. So I am Aishurya. I will be presenting our uh, results on weighted tiling systems for graph, particularly the evaluation complexity of that, um, which is uh, accepted for FSTTCS. And uh, this is a joint work with Paul Gaston, who is at LSV, France. So in the short talk, we will uh, first see the formalism of weighted, weighted tiling systems, and then we will look at some algorithmic problems on graphs that can be modeled using weighted tiling or, uh, systems. And then we look at the evaluation problem and the complexity and the case for bounded tree width graphs. This is the outline. So words, so all these systems in general, it is giving a finite representation for some sets. Uh, for instance, some sets of words can be represented finitely using finite pseudomata or lo some suitable logic. And when it comes to a function, we can use weighted automata or weighted logics. Now, when we have to look at sets of graphs, this becomes graph acceptors or logics on graphs. And when we have to look at, look at functions from graphs uh, to a weight domain, what we can use is this weighted tiling systems or weighted logics. Okay, so this weighted automata on graphs, of course, it did exist before. And uh, what we do in this work is to give the evaluation complexity or understand it well uh, is what we do. So what are weighted tiling systems? So they have, so this represents a map uh, from some graph to a weight domain. So these graphs are nod and edge labeled graphs and the labels come from a finite set. Um, and in fact, uh, so we can think of it as each of this edge represents a direction, okay? So there is at most one incoming or one outgoing edge per direction. In each direction, there can be one neighbor or there can be one predecessor. So examples will include binary trees where this uh, edge labels or directions are left child and right child or we can have grids like this where the edge labels are um, down or right okay uh, and uh, notice that this has this nice property that every uh, vertex has at most one neighbor in each direction okay so these are the kind of graphs that we consider and uh, what weight domains do we consider? We can have, um, so basically the weight domain will be also equipped with um, a sum and a product to make it a semi-ring. So the weight domains that we consider, of course we have booleans and then we have uh, the ones in which you consider the natural uh, numbers or integers or rationals and uh, so this is with addition and multiplication as the weight um, operators on the weight domain. Or we could also consider tropical semi-rings, max plus, min plus, et cetera. So weighted tiling, tiling systems, as we said, is a finite description to represent weight functions on graphs. This is by means of a finite tiling or coloring. So what does that look like? So, so we have a finite set of colors or states. So for example, this yellow and blue. Let's take a graph. This is a coloring. So every vertex get a, gets a color. This is another coloring. So how do we get a weight for a coloring? How do we get a weight for a graph? So for this, first of all, we allow only some tiles. So there are this set of permitted tiles. Okay. So these permitted tiles will always look there. This it has a central vertex, and then it has these neighbors, and it will give the uh, a color for the central vertex and a color for its neighbors. So this is for a vertex which has four neighbors: one down, one right, and one down inverse and one right inverse. And this is for a different type of vertex which does not have an incoming um, right edge. So this for this kind of thing, this is the central vertex and it has these neighbors. 
So we give this set of permitted tiles and we also give weights for those. For example, this tile has weight two, this tile has weight three and so on. So uh, we can also think of it as the non-permitted tiles get weight zero. Now, what is the weight assigned by a coloring? The weight of a coloring is actually the product of weights of the tiles appearing in the coloring. For example, if we look at uh, this particular coloring, we can see that this first tile, this appear two times. So here and here. So the in the product, uh, we get two square and then this particular tile with weight three that appears also two tile two times so that becomes three square and um, um, and and this particular tile with weight one that appears once here so that appears once this particular this particular tile with weight one that also appears once so that comes here and so on so for for each tile, we look at the occurrence and then we take the product as many number of times. So we just take the product of all the, the tiles appearing in the coloring and that gives the weight of a coloring. And the weight assigned to a graph is actually the sum of the weights of all possible colorings. Okay, so this is how a weighted tiling systems assign a weight to a graph. Okay, so we will see some examples. Mm. Let us say we want to compute the permanent of a matrix. So given an n by n matrix, okay, so by this uh, coordinates at ijth entry, <coughs> the permanent is defined to be the sum over all the permutations. And in a permutation, you look at the, the product of the elements at a i sigma i. Okay, so this is uh, similar to computing the determinant, but the unsigned version of it, okay? So one way of getting the permanent, so this expression, if you look at it, we look at all the permutations, and then we want to look at um, the i, the, uh, the entry at that corresponds to this i, and then the, the map under the permutation. So this is same as <coughs> selecting one node in every row and every column, okay? A permutation is same as selecting a node in every row and every column. Why is this the same? For example, on row one, the permutation maps it to three, row two, it maps it to two, row three, it maps it to four, and row four, it maps it to one. So that way, <coughs> this uh, selecting exactly one vertex in each row and column corresponds to a permutation. So, if we can somehow or other select these red vertices, which correspond to exactly one vertex in every row and column, we are selecting a permutation. And now what we have to do is we have to take the product of these entries. For this, what we do is we get a tiling. Okay. And in for this, the states will be this red vertices that we want to select. And then we have some uh, other vertices, other colors, these were colors kind of says that okay, this color says that oh in this particular uh, row so this right arrow says that the selected vertex appears to the right this particular vertex says that the selected vertex appears to the wall to the to below so here for example the selected vertex is to the right you can see that all these uh, this state this state and this state they all point to the right and in all these things the selected vertex appears to the to below so that it comes like this and here, for example, the selected vertex is to the left of this and to the bottom of this. So the arrow is like that. So we, we will label the states with these many um, states or colors in a consistent way. So we will check that, for example, here, if the arrow is to the right, here also the arrow must be to the right or it must be a colored vertex, okay? And just by permitting those tiles, we will make sure that there is only one um, red vertex in each row and in each column. And then we will give the weight. What will be our weights? The weights of uh, these tiles in which the label is zero, the label of the central vertex is zero, 
will get weight 0. Every other vertex will get weight 1. So when we take the product, it will actually be the product of this red vertex because every other vertices which are labeled by these colors, they are all getting weight 1. So when we take the product, it will be actually the product of the red vertices. And so one such tiling will compute this product that we have here. And the weight assigned to the graph will actually be the sum of weight over all such colorings, which will indeed be the permanent of the matrix. This is an example of computing the permanent of a matrix. The another example is to compute the click number. So what is the click number? It is the size of the biggest click, which is inside a graph. So for this, let, so this graph, if you look at it, it's a, it's not a bounded degree graph. So to represent this, we will just use the adjacency matrix representation. Okay, so, uh, and since it's an undirected graph, we will look at only the lower triangular, lower right triangular matrix. Basically, so these rows corresponds here to, these rows and corresponds here to A, B, C, D, E. We will put a one if there is an edge between these two vertices. That's the meaning. So between uh, B and C, there is an edge. So there is a one. Between A and C, there is a zero. That is because between A and C, there is no edge. So that is how we represent a graph, an arbitrary graph as a grid. Now, computing the click number, essentially we have to pick a subset of vertices and for this subset of vertices, there should be um, edges between all of them. So here we will use a different semiring, the max plus semiring. Okay. And what we will use is we will use these four states. This, the, the vertices that are on this border here, this diagonal here, they will be labeled by either this state or this state. If they are labeled by this state, then I am not considering it in my subset. If it is labeled by this state, then it is getting considered in my subset. So this is in the subset, this is in the subset, this is in the subset. Then what I will do is consistently, if this is selected, then everything in the, the horizontal line will be on for every coloring in the row. Okay, horizontal line is on. And if this is selected, then the vertical line is on, on everything in the column. I notice that if this is not selected, then the horizontal line is off in all the row. And if it is not selected, then the vertical line is off in all its column. So then what I need to check is all the states, inside states, which get this plus kind of thing, which has both vertical and horizontal lines, they should be labeled one. That is to say that there is an edge between the selected vertices. So one tiling, or this particular tiling, it guesses three, um, a three size subset, a, a subset of three vertices, and it will make sure that there is an edge between all of them. Okay, and then I'm going to take the max over all such tilings, so which will give me the biggest such subset, and the weight will actually be what I want, the click number. Oh, the weights here actually will be, the weight will be one for all these diagonal vertices that are getting a plus and um, the weights, weights of everything else will be zero. So when I'm taking the sum in, in one run, the weight will actually be the number of vertices that were selected in the subset. Okay, so that is how I compute the click number. So this is using the max plus semiring. So coming back to the outline, we have now seen the formalism of weighted tiling systems and some examples of modeling problems on graphs using this. Now we will go to our results, the evaluation problem and the complexity, the case of bounded tree width graphs. So for the evaluation problem, we are given a weighted tiling system and a graph. And our question is to compute the weight assigned to the graph. Okay, it's a computational problem, it's a function problem. 
this problem can be solved in polynomial space indeed we will just store the weight computed so far in a in a um, temporary register we will take the graph we will enumerate every possible um, tiling or coloring and for each of them we will compute its weight and we just add it to the aggregate so we can solve it in polynomial space no matter which semi ring we pick then we look at for particular semi rings for the plus time semi rings like natural semi ring this becomes sharp p complete when the weights are given in binary what is sharp p so the function is sharp p if there is a polynomial time non deterministic turing machine such that the value that you want to compute using the function is exactly the number of accepting paths that this turing machine has on this particular input okay so value that you want to compute on x you give x as the input to this turing machine the number of accepting paths that you have should be equal to the number that you the output of this function so uh, for natural semi ring this is what we will get so our idea is to to get the upper bound we will get a polynomial time turing machine that will guess a coloring and it will compute the weight of this coloring in binary okay once it has this then it will make another path that will make as many accepting paths as the computed weight so it's like we can do that and for the lower bound already we have seen the example of computing the permanent this is already a sharp p hard problem so we get the complexity for max plus semiring for tropical semiring this problem is p to the np log complete when the weights are given in unary so what's p to the np log it is a polynomial time deterministic turing machine that makes logarithmically many oracle queries to an np machine for example to sat so for the complexity bound the lower bound comes from the computing the click number that's already a p to the np log hard and for the upper bound what we do is we will do a binary search in the possible weights so if you have k if you have k um, nodes and uh, l is the maximum weight the the weights can be between let's say 0 and k times l so this is the difference this is the maximum uh, range in which you can get the weights so in every time you check whether using a binary search you check whether the weight is at least this and for making checking whether the weight is at least this you can have an np machine so this is how we get the upper bound now we consider this for bounded tree width graphs so when the input graph is a bounded tree width graph this thing can actually be solved in polynomial time more precisely in linear time with respect to the graph and polynomial time with respect to the tiling system so the proof idea here is to get a tree decomposition and once you have the tree decomposition we will construct a tree automaton a weighted tree automaton such that the weight computed by the tree automaton is indeed the weight computed by the by the weighted tiling system for the graph that this decomposition represents this tree decomposition is the tree decomposition of a graph so the weight of, that is given by the tree automaton weighted tree automaton on this decomposition is exactly the weight that the weight, weighted tiling system will give to the graph so this is the technical part so once we get this so this indeed this uh, depends on um the distributivity of the semi ring and uh, we can show that for any tree term this uh, no matter which decomposition you take this will be guaranteed so we get a tree automaton with that property and once you have that you can just evaluate the weighted tree automaton and of course this this is done in linear time and then once you are here you get this uh, automaton which is polynomial in the size of the weighted tiling system and then you just need to evaluate the tree automaton 
So to conclude, we have given the formalism examples, uh, the problem and the complexity, and the result for the bounded tree width graph. We welcome you to look at the paper for details. Thank you. So this is Paul Gaston, whose face is not visible until now. So thank you from us. <laughs>